let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer to you this day, and we ask that your name be glorified in all that we do. We ask that we may love you, honor you, and serve you in such a way that we may always glorify and witness to your truth. Let us be as you call us to be, the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today is the feast day of St. Pio of Pietraclina. No, I got that wrong. I always get it wrong. Pietra, Pietralcina. So it's St. Pio of Pietralcina. So the first time I ever saw that, actually I was in Somerville at the time at uh, St. Benedict's, and I says, well, who is St. Pio of Pietralcina? Well, the answer is simple. It's Padre Pio. It's that name that we hear, that we we know all the time, but that's his official saint title is St. Pio of Pietrelcina. Now, what makes Padre Pio so important? And for those of you, um, actually, there's a new movie coming out about, about him, which is going to uh, feature Shia LaBeouf. You may have seen news uh, programs about it and everything else as uh Padre Pio. Padre Pio was a Capuchin uh, Franciscan friar. I learned a long time ago you call them friars. I do some voiceover work. I, I, I haven't done it in a while, and they've called me back to, to do it again for uh, the Middle East. So I do English. I do their English. And it's just fill in when they need somebody. And uh, I... I read the script. You send me a script that says the the car is red and the car was blue. I'm going to read the car is red. Well, someone who originally wrote the script referred to Franciscans as monks. And there was a Franciscan over in New York, up, upstate New York, who wrote this nasty comment saying, who do you think you are? Da, da, da that Franciscans are friars. So I've never forgotten that. And of course, I get the email, even though I just read the script. So, uh, and I didn't know that. So now I know that very well. A Franciscan is a friar. A Benedictine is a monk. I hope I got that right. So Franciscans are friars, and he was a Capuchin friar. So Capuchins, who also, Cardinal O'Malley is one of those, is a uh, a stricter form of the teachings of St. Francis. There are even stricter forms as well. There's an order of Franciscan, I guess you would say, friars, who live in the city of Boston here that are called uh, of the primitive observance. So they actually live as if they were living in the 13th century. And I'm, I'm not being sarcastic by saying that is literally true as if they were living in the 13th century so they live that way that's why it's called the primitive observance however um uh, uh padre pio was a capuchin same as cardinal o'malley and it, it's a kind of a, a an order that is more contemplative than other franciscan orders because uh, they're all different forms of orders. We talked about that uh, on the other show last week, but Franciscans have several orders within their universe, and the Capuchins are very contemplative. So he lived as a Capuchin monk uh, in his monastery in Italy, and he was a miracle worker. Now, what he's most known for is he was what is known as a stigmatist. And what is a stigmatist? A stigmatist is someone who receives from God. It's not something they do on their own. Receives from God the five wounds of Christ. And they are permanent as far as I know. So I think what happened is one day he suffered this terrible pain. And then he looked down and he had the five wounds of Christ, which are the wounds in the hands, the wounds in the feet, and the wound in the side. So he had that, and he had that through his whole life. But he was also known as being a miracle worker. He did uh, many miracles, but he also, they said that he actually uh, had conversations with, I have to express this correctly, because I've expressed this wrongly, it will not be correct Catholic teaching. Uh, evangelicals who are listening will correctly be scandalized and tell me so if they'd like. Um, so I have to say this properly. 
he had an ability to communicate, I think, with angels and saints. That's different. This is where the having to express it correctly, that is very different than communicating with the dead, which is forbidden in the church. But they they said that he had, the, and some people uh, apparently witnessed this, that he could talk to people who were saints or angels. Maybe it was just angels. Um, but he had that ability, not 24-7, but when necessary. Uh, He was also known as someone who could read souls. There are a few people you hear of who did that. Also, St. John Vianney had the same talent. And ironically enough, or coincidentally enough is a better way to put it, the two of them are most known for spending hours and hours and hours in the confessional. By the way, I have two time periods where I'm in the confessional. I'm only there an hour on Wednesdays and 45 minutes on Saturdays because no one waits in line to come to my confessional. Confession isn't as common now as it was then. But you're welcome to come to confession 6 o'clock on Wednesdays and 3 o'clock on Saturdays at St. Anthony Parish in Alston, but he would spend hours, like they used to call these kind of people prisoners of the confession because they would listen to the confessions confessions for hours, and he could read souls. So if someone gave a confession and they held back a sin, he would know it, and he would say, you're forgetting a sin. Very important, very, very powerful. We'll talk more on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. We'll be right back. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out Catholic TV. And don't forget our own website, CatholicAudioMedia.com. That's CatholicAudioMedia.com. Check out the website. Check out the archives of the show. Uh, Check out our Substack newsletter. You can also call us if you'd like to leave a message. Uh, And also, you can connect to the parish and get all the information we have from the parish. And if you'd like to donate to the program, you can do that directly. You can even, you know, people say, well, you can donate, but, you know, with, uh, what do you call it, donate through, through uh, your debit card or through the internet. Well, there's also a way you can donate by check if you'd like to do that as well. All kinds of ways you can do that at catholicaudiomedia.com. So we're talking about St. Pio of Petroclina, uh, uh, which Petros. Petrosina, sorry. And the way we know him is as Padre Pio. Now, what makes him so important, of course, is that there are people that we know people who, or have known people who knew people who knew him. You know, his story, he lived during the 20th century, so his story is fairly relevant. So we know a lot of these powerful Padre Pio stories. And the other thing, too, is I've come to realize that during the 20th century, there was a form of heresy that was intensely strict in the Catholic Church. And that was a heresy that is rooted in paganism that teaches that in order to get to heaven, you have to do good things. Well, that's true to a point, but it, 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 what makes it paganism is is nothing in that heresy says you have to believe in God at all. Uh, and obviously you do. Part of that thing of doing good things is you go to church on Sunday, you receive the Eucharist. But if you look the way many people understand their faith, they understand it as in order to get to heaven, you had to do good things. And there is virtually no discussion about prayer. And that is a heresy. It is Catholic teaching that you cannot do the um, our call as Catholics if you aren't a person of prayer. But there were many forms of teaching prior to Vatican II, and even after Vatican II, but prior to Vatican II, that basically had very little to do with prayer, and mostly it was focused on road prayer, where we are called, every saint would tell you that, to have this personal relationship with Christ. We talked about that last week. And so because of that, there was this horrible heresy that really, especially in the United States, and, and now it is part of the reason why there's so much tension between the, the people in the Latin Mass 
and the people in the Vatican II Mass. What they may find is what's really wrong is the teaching isn't done well. And that's the problem in, in Vatican II, that emphasis on that relationship with Christ is there, which wasn't as emphasized prior to that. It was all emphasized of doing good things. And that has presented the problem. Well, he was focused on having that relationship with Christ and trusting in the Lord and knowing and being a person of prayer and taking everything with the Lord. And he also had, uh, as I understand, he had a teaching where he said what he wanted to do in his eternal life was to stand at the bottom of the stairs of heaven and lead people up to heaven. So you can see it's all that relationship and all that doing what is best for the salvation of souls. That's really what our faith is all about. The other stuff is important. We're called to do good things in response to our relationship with Christ, not as pagans would teach just because we're supposed to do good things. That's the difference. Yes, we are called to search to live a virtuous life, but you cannot do it if we're not in touch with the source of all that is virtuous, which is Christ himself to really live the virtuous life we're called. So he really also spread that message. He was also known to be a bilocator. Uh, One of his miraculous powers is he could be two places at the same time. And my granduncle told me, of who was a Trappist monk and then left the Trappist to become a diocesan priest. He told me of a time during World War II where there was a plane that was flying over a battlefield that could be hit by shrapnel. And he appeared in front of the pilot on the other side of the windshield and said, go back. And the pilot did. Meanwhile, all along, he was in his cell. We'll see you on Monday. Have yourself a blessed day. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.